TV. I am your host, Mark Fusco, here for episode 100 of Elite Wine TV. First of all, thank you for everybody uh, coming or, or watching these episodes, especially if you've been watching since number one. If you have been, put a, put a comment to say, hey, you've been watching it since the very first. Of course, I have because, well, I'm in it. So um, to commemorate, I'm not sure if this is really going to work, but it got all fancy. Um, to commemorate the 100th episode, I decided to do something a little bit special, um, just to kind of explain the, the thought process. I mean, I could have gone through a bunch of different wines, and uh, now I think about it, I'm going to forget a whole bunch of stuff I'm supposed to say. <laughs> so hopefully I don't forget all the stuff I want to say from my notes. Um, my notes in my head. But uh, I could have gone with, you know... Um, re-reviewing the first wine as you can see I've pretty much except for the glass there we go uh, except for the glass uh, being fancy um, recreated episode one. Oh, I have my glasses on <laughs> but uh, I didn't feel like put my contacts on but I got the the black napkins we have all this of course there's a Christmas tree in the back so that wasn't from episode one wearing the original shirt so um, and as Princess Bride, what is it? Uh, not that any, not that the job has gone wrong, but I want to read the quote. When a job went wrong, you went back to the beginning, and this is where we got the job. So it's the beginning, and I'm staying till Vizzini comes. I'm sure you know where that came from. So back to the beginning, in essence. So I thought about maybe re-reviewing 337, the 337 Cabernet Sauvignon. I thought about, you know, my doing a, a wine, one of my favorite varietals, Zinfandel, getting a nice bottle of Zin. Um thought about doing value wines, I thought about doing expensive wines, uh, I put it out there on the Twitterverse, so I got some great suggestions, uh, some, some specific suggestions, and uh, one of my, my good buddies out in Kuwait, hi Heidi, um, suggested a hundred dollar bottle of wine, and uh, for the hundredth episode, so um, I, I basically I just went to the store and I just started looking around and, and looking at certain wines, and it came to me that I wanted to do a wine that I'd never done before. Um, I decided to, to go large a little bit. I didn't get a $100 bottle of wine because uh, I didn't see any $100 bottles, at least not where the, the regular people shop at Specs. Um, I know they have a nice wine room in the back, and I was afraid to go in there and, and end up buying a $200 bottle of wine just because. Um, but, you know, the idea is that this show is, you know, meant to focus on value wines, um, so, expensive wines are not part of the normal thing, but this is a special episode, so I thought I'd splurge. So, with that said, so I got my wine here, and this wine, okay, yeah, what specs? First time I've ever done one of these. So, we have the Domaine du Pegal Chateauneuf de Pop. Bought at Specs for eighty-three dollars and twenty cents. That includes my five percent discount for paying with cash or debit. Um, so this is normally a eighty-nine, eighty-nine dollar bottle of wine, somewhere around that eighty, yeah, eighty-nine, eighty-eight dollar bottle. Um, there was a ninety-dollar bottle listed, but they didn't have any of them. Uh, it was between this and another one, uh, Domaine Chevy or Charmin. I can't remember if it was like 60 or 70. It was like 60 some odd dollars. I decided to go with this because, um, one, kind of the price. I wanted to get all pricey. But two, there was more on the internet as far as reviews about it. That um, um, Both wines had great reviews or had good reviews. Um, this one just had more reviews. So I felt that I would uh, start with this one. So let's go, let's go ahead and review the wine. And then we're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff afterwards. So if you just want to watch the wine review... Uh, we will do that, and then, um, yes, now i got to find my notes on this, because we're doing a whole bunch of wines today. All right, so, uh, Domaine 
do Pagao. It's a late. This, this was um, founded in the late seventeenth century, and uh, it was called Ferrod Fils, uh, you know, brother the you know the Ferrod brothers. Um, they changed their name in nineteen eighty seven to to this name. Uh, they've it's been a family. Uh, domain for a while from what I saw on their website and they do have a website it's great um, the the name Pagao is the name of a bottle that uh, the wine jug that they found in excavations of the 14th century Pope's palace uh, they have 11 vineyards throughout the AOC that they that they control where they get their grapes from uh, this wine is aged for at least 18 months in oak and uh, they it looks like it's primarily Grenache Syrah Mavedra uh, some Senso and some Kunwa, um, though they have a vineyard that has 13 varietals in it. So if you remember from Sommelier School about stuffing off the pop, uh, there are 13 or slash 15 varietals depending on who's counting and who's calling what. Because there's a couple like duplicate ones, like red white version or something. You know, there's there's a couple extras in there. But um, so this wine may have all 13 in it, um, which is pretty rare. And, uh, but you, it doesn't say exactly, and it was kind of hard off of their website to know what exactly is in this because they, it looks like it was a website that, you know, it was originally, it's a French website and they translated it into English. So some of the English doesn't quite come out right. And you're kind of going, huh? But overall, I mean, it's still a well-designed website. Uh, it's actually kind of neat. But, um, so any of the Chateau Neuf de Pop that actually uses all of the varietals allowed in the AOC is pretty rare because uh, there's only, there only a few that are made. So um, now we'll, we'll do the wine review. Uh, now remember, Chateau Neuf de Pop, or not remember, but Chateau Neuf de Pop is named, is, is called the Castle of the King, or Castle of the Pope. Um, in the 14th century, uh, the papacy was moved to Avignon and uh, a castle was built. Um, and uh, the papacy stayed there for about 70 years. Uh, norm, what they originally did was they drank, they were really a Burgundian wine enthusiast, the popes that lived there, but eventually the wine got better, um, and this became kind of its own, uh, you know, became very well known and, and very, very good wine. Uh, this Chateau of the Pop is in the southern Rhone area of France. And like I said, you can have 13 varietals, up to 13 in the wine. Though most of them concentrate on like a, like a few of them. So uh, let's check it out. I'm super excited, by the way. All right, not much. I, I, can't, I can't really use that glass. It's nice and all, but I can't really get in there and swirl this and, oh. Oh, this is a 2006, by the way. Uh, get a little close-up of that. Um, couldn't find a 2005. Uh, that's, you know, that's one of the best vintages in a while. 2006, though, rated uh, excellent in the Rhone region. So um, this should be pretty good. It's kind of... I was kind of... Grapey and thin. Not a good start. Especially for 90 bucks. I'm sorry, 83, but 90 with tax. 83 bucks and it's, the, the bouquet is not. All right, now I'm starting to get a little more because I'm able to really just swirl this and it's start, now actually starting to interact with the air. Um, I'm getting a bit of earthiness, which I should. Kind of manure, um, barnyard, almost barnyard. I don't really get like the hay part of barnyard. I get more the the dirt, mud, manure. Um, but it's really subtle. Like it, it doesn't really hit you in the face like some other wines. So let's taste it. Let's hope. Let's hope the, the palate really grabs you. Wow, is that dry? Hold on, I'm gonna get some water. Man, is that dry. Um, 
one, I've got the water to really rinse out my mouth. Um, sometimes I find that if I haven't rinsed my mouth out a little bit, um, my mouthwashes that I use sometimes affect my palate. Really dry. Super dry. Like, the, the tannins are killing me. I'm not saying in a bad way, but man, you need some you need some cheeses. You're gonna need some meat with this stuff. It's it, it, it's it's got to it's got to have something to really to really uh, interact with the wine because this is definitely not a sipping wine. This is not wine I'd be you know drinking while watching a football game. I didn't, I didn't do that much last night. Yeah, <laughs> I went through a lot of wine last night. Um, oh, by the way, uh, a thirty second review: Oak Leaf Cabernet Sauvignon, or was it no, Oak Leaf Merlot? Two ninety seven from Walmart, but hey, it was only it was one of the only non review wines I had in the house last night. So um, anyway, very dry. I'm getting this bitterness, this like, especially at. Especially, you know, at the at the tail end, this real bitter root, kind of like, um, kind of like bitters. I mean, literally, like like a bitter. So, like like a root, like roots. So you're getting that that very very dirty, earthy taste to it. It's it's, it's almost sour. Um, I was I, I felt like I was getting like hints of pepper from the from the bouquet. I don't want to drink all the wine because we're supposed to have some people over to enjoy the wine, so I gotta have some left over. Yeah, the, the the bouquet is starting to really open up now. There's some spiciness to it. Um, this wine definitely needs to stay open probably for the rest of the day to, to, to really um, get everything that's going to come out of it. It's, it's really tight. There's not, you know, it's, it's hard to get a lot out of it. Um, I would say the potential is great. And this is also a wine that you could, I could probably sell her for 15 years. Um, the tannins alone tell me that you could sell her this for a while. And, and you're supposed to, but you know, you're not really supposed to drink this stuff too early, but it's three years, you know, so it's had a little bit of time to soften, but it definitely needs some more time. Um, I'm getting a little bit of like cherry with it, really like it's very small amounts. Um, rating. You know, I, I don't know what to rate this. Um, I've never had a wine like this that obviously has needs time needs more time it needs and needs food um i mean i've had some other wines that you're like yeah it'd be better with food but um i can tell you that it's I, i'm not like floored by it i'm not you know i'm not looking you know, i'm not drinking this wine going oh my god it's the best ever um like like the wine from last week that completely surprised me. I had no clue that that wine was going to be as good, at least to me. I was expecting pretty ordinary wine. I was expecting like, you know, a low 80s, maybe mid 80 point wine. And it, it kind of hit me from nowhere. Um, I would say this is an excellent wine. But I'm not sure, and maybe it's just my palate isn't sophisticated enough. I'm not sure if it's $80 worth of good wine. I, I would say... It needs to be less, but you know this is this is where my experience with wine is is showing or lack of. I can tell you that I, I like it. Every every drink I have of it, I like it more. But oh man, it's tight. 
I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm just going to say it's probably an 88-point wine in general, but if you're not eating food with it and you're not cellaring it, you're, you're, you're not getting the full value, the full potential out of the wine. <coughs> All right, so with that said, um, I'm going to save that. I'm not going to dump that out. A um, few things. Uh few announcements, if you will. So that's, 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 that's the review. So now we're going to talk about a few things about episode 100. Um, you know, what? like I talked about, you know, I kind of replicated the, the first show a little bit. Actually, I think it was the first three shows I recorded in one day. Um, I can tell you folks that <coughs> over these pa past 100 episodes, um, that first episode, first couple episodes, I, I had no clue what I was doing. I had drank wine a lot. I, you know, I've tried to evaluate wine whenever I could, but I wasn't really a person that, that drank wine and, and really, really evaluated. I usually just drank it. And then a lot, especially the past, you know, few years, I was drinking, you know, as, as cheap of wine as possible. And that's kind of the, the, the idea behind this show is, you know, the wines that I drank, uh, the, usually the $10 and under, <clears throat> the wine would occasionally go up to 20 um, You know, those are the wines that I had the most experience with. Um, and that's the wines that I felt that the majority of people go out and buy. Most people don't buy this. Um, and unless you're a really serious wine person, you, you shouldn't buy this. If, if you watch my show and you buy the type of wines that I normally do, don't buy it. Because you'll probably be disappointed in it. I'm not disappointed at all. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like still uh, intrigued by it because I think there's so much potential for it. Maybe it's really a 92 to 93 or 94 point one. I thought I saw some ratings of that high. But it's a wine that I'm not really experienced with, and, and that this level of wine, especially wines that really need that extra time or, or really need that extra something, um, kind of confuses me. But in general, it's an, I would say it's an 88-point wine, but most people, if they drank it, especially if we're doing it now, would probably not like it. Okay? Um, but, you know, the, those first few episodes, I was kind of tentative. And back then, I actually was have, I had a regular day job. So this was not meant to be anything other than kind of a hobby and really uh, an education for myself and hopefully educate you about wine. Uh, that's where sommelier school comes in. You know, they take the sommelier test eventually next year. Um, and then of course I decided to leave the, the job that I had and uh, and for those of you that know me in person you know why so I'm not going to hash that out. But um, And so for four months I was able to concentrate on the website and the podcast and all the reviews and all the sommelier school and it was great um, but in the back of my head it wasn't you know I always knew that I needed to get a quote real job again because um, this does not pay the bills so uh, now I'm back to working again and so that's why you see sometimes sommelier school takes a little longer to come out because I wasn't working during the first what 14 13 14 uh, lessons actually the first I guess 12 lessons of sommelier school I wasn't working, so that's why they were usually out on time every week. Uh, unfortunately, this week I decided not to put it out. We're going to be officially on winter break, since most colleges are on winter break right now. And I didn't want to split up the Germany lessons between you know, before and after winter break, so I wanted to keep them together. There's only going to be really probably two episodes, an introduction to German wine and then uh, to cover the, the, the main, the major uh, re wine growing regions of Germany. There's Oh, there's like 13 of them, but we're only going to cover, I think, what, four or five. So um, I can do that in one show. It'll be a long show. Um, so, uh, you know, this is this is pretty amazing. Who'd have thunk that I would have 100 episodes? Actually, I knew I would because I knew I wasn't going to just sit there and record like five videos and get all disappointed because two people saw them and that was it. So, you know, I, the numbers are growing slowly. I've got quite a few followers on Twitter. Thank you. Uh, if you're one of my Twitter followers or Facebook friends, thank you very much. Tell your friends about it. Get more people on, on board. The website's going to go through a few changes. Um, first of all, um, there'll be a, uh, instead of the library and the marketplace having separate links, you're going to have one that says buy stuff. Um, that pull, there'll be a pull down menu that has uh, the marketplace and library. And then it should also have something, I forgot how I how I title it, but it'll be like 1337 store or whatever. It's going to be logoed material, which I'm going to be working on some of that today and tomorrow over the next few days, try to get some logoed material out there, t-shirts, stuff like that. Um, 
and you have, well, you know, play upon the leet name, the wording, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we also are going to have uh, what's going to be called the liter board, or, you know, kind of a, the leader board, but liter board. And this is where those of you that contribute, which I still only have one major contributor, uh, but those of you that contribute to the show uh, or to the website via PayPal, you will get credit for contributing if you, as long as you did at least 50 bucks. Uh, and there's different levels, and um, you'll see them on there. I think of level one tech, level two tech. I think that I have project manager, IT manager, and then I think I have C. I think I have CTO for like we're talking big bucks for that. Um, you also can become a producer or executive producer of each show if you contribute. Uh, so if you contribute after this show. Um, between now and Wednesday when the next show comes up and you contribute at least fifty dollars, you will get an actual credit at the end of the show. Like your name will be on, you know, the credits. Uh, executive producer will be the person that contributes the most amount of money. Now I did steal this from another podcast that I listened to. Um, and I don't expect tons of uh, donations to be coming in all of a sudden so you can get a producer credit, but technically that's what a producer does. Producer provides the money. Um, they don't really do anything else. So um, our first executive producer will be Jordan Rinke because he's the guy that's he's the guy that's contributed the most. He's also going to be the number one on the leaderboard. Uh, if you, you do subscription, your subscription payments will contribute to the actual leaderboard. Um, once you hit 50 bucks in contributions, whether it's subscription or straight contributions, any type of money you put in, it's all put together. So it's kind of like a high scoreboard. You know, kind of play upon the, the video game and the elite stuff and stuff like that. So we've got that going, executive producers, uh, producers. Um, let's see. Yeah, I want to make sure I got Jordan taken care of. Um, logoed merchandise. We got more shows coming. Um, <clears throat> hopefully I had, a, hopefully I did a cool intro. I thought about doing a little like mashup of, of some of the old, some of the other shows. You know, have not necessarily outtakes, but things that happened before and after the actual review because, you know, the camera's running for usually a couple minutes prior and a couple, well, usually a few seconds after the actual review. Um, little funny things that may have happened during the, like, you know, I, I went to go get water, you know, got up because there was a couple episodes I forgot the actual wine glass and stuff like that. You know, I've tried to find some funny moments, but that's going to take a while and um, I really want to get this episode up and running. Let's see. Other than that, I just want to thank all of you for uh, sticking around, watching these things. A um, hundred episodes, I feel that I've uh, gotten much better in the presentation and my evaluation of the wines. And uh, that's another thing, Skype. If you, if you know anyone out there that makes wine, that's a, that wants to send me wine to review, we'll do a video Skype interview. Have them contact me, mark at 1337wine.com or have them send me a Twitter note or anything like that. Um, we've got two in, we got two done, uh, Cindy from Passaggio Wines, uh, and Mike from 8-Bit Vintners. Uh, they both, they both were great, um, great interviews. Uh, the only thing that, that, I, the only thing that was bad about the first one is the audio issues where I had to put like, you know, little like close captioning when, when the audio was dropping out between what me and Cindy were saying, but, um, <clears throat> great stuff and have more interest coming, have more people interested in that. So hopefully we can do maybe one a month, but these things take a while from just coordinating my schedule with somebody else's schedule and, and them making their decision if they want to do it or not, and then, of course, shipping the wine and everything. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, we've got some great wines the rest of this week. Uh, Wednesday's wines, I have three wines. It's going to be a special, another special. So 101 will be a special uh, with three wines. Did I say it was special? Yes, yeah, special. Uh, and then Friday's wine um, is going to be real interesting. So yet more, all this week, wines I've never had before, or at least from regions I've never had. Um, the three wines for Wednesday, they uh, are varietals that everyone will know, but um, they're from an area, um, yeah, they're over here off camera. Uh, they're from an area of the world that I've never had wine from before, and probably most of you haven't either. Uh, and then Friday's wine, varietals I've never heard of. <laughs> And from another part of the world that I've never had wine from. And I'm almost going to say for sure, almost all of you or almost none of you have ever had wine from this part of the world. Um, that's going to do it for episode 100. I hope you all had a great time. Um, you know, if you're at the Chateau of the Pop, I would say, you know, get some of the less pricey ones that are probably a lot more approachable because uh, there's definitely some that are in the $20 to $40 range. Um, something like this. 
you, you, you probably need to sell her for a while and you, you need to be really serious about it. That's going to do it. We'll see everybody again next time.